Good morning. Good morning. Happy fourth weekend, even though it's not the fourth yet. It's coming. Uh, so today our, our, our uh, service is for Pentecost 4, so the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. And uh, our hymns today, we'll have some patriotic hymns to uh, remember our freedom and our independence in our nation. And um, welcome those of you who are joining us today on Facebook Live, worshiping with us. We're glad that you choose to be in this holy space with us. We think it's a beautiful place, and those of us who are here welcome you to this space. If you don't have our bulletin, which you can download on our Facebook Live page, you can also find uh, the service in the Book of Common Prayer, Book of Common Prayer online, so BCP online, and uh, find it under Holy Eucharist, right to page 355. It's good to be back. Uh, my retreats were great. It was like, I like being back to being able to get the wheels back on the car, right? Realign them a little bit. Uh, and uh, the clergy at the retreat definitely um, needing, needing uh, the retreats from the church pension fund. So it's good to be back, and uh, happy July. Um, and uh, as far as, uh, uh, I know you've been waiting for a date for John's next surgery, and it is July the 19th. So a big surgery uh, on his elbow again, like six hour surgery. So uh, here we go. Woo. You're glad to be out of your sling, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, please continue to pray for John and his long, long, long recovery from his accident last December. But good to be back, and I'll turn you over to our senior warden. Thank you. Well, it's good to have you back. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we have been so pleased uh, with your recommendation of Reverend Patricia Coons as a supply minister when you've been out. And we have enjoyed her. Uh, we are now posting a message with bulletin and scripture information for those of you who are using Facebook Live. Uh, so we don't have to announce that anymore. And just to let you know, the Seaford Community Food Closet at St. John's is in dire need of peanut butter. Uh, we also can get peanut butter, jelly, and mac and cheese, but they have a big uh, need for the peanut butter right now. If you're able to bring that in, that would be great. Uh, Herb had a couple of announcements for um, technology-wise. We're now posting our St. Luke's service on YouTube. It's not live streaming, but it is the video of the service. Uh, so it would be posted like after today, today's service would be posted on YouTube. Uh, for the St. Luke's Facebook page, uh, the diocese is helping us out by posting a daily prayer and hymn. So that will begin this week. So if you, if you know anyone who is at home and uh, needs some churching, uh, they can get that on our St. Luke's Facebook page. Also, Jocelyn Quick is working on our new website. So that's under development. And it's, we're going to have a new domain, stlukesieber.church. And that's going to be hosted by the diocese also, although we will do our own updates here. But there's a lot going on technology-wise, uh, and that helps us to reach out into the community. Um, of course, we're all asked to invite people to join us in church, but one way uh, that we can reach out on our own is uh, to put it out there on Facebook, and um, people are able to do that uh, without actually coming to the church, although we hope eventually they will come to the church. But it's a way of outreach into the community and doing our mission work. So are there any other announcements? In that case, let's continue to worship. Our first hymn is hymn number 719.
First Reg 2 begins on page 1 of our bulletin, page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, let's pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. that's found on our insert page, the Contemporary Collect. Together we pray, O oh God, God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. First reading is from Isaiah. This reading is framed by the word rejoice, which appears in both the first and last verses. This heart-stirring text offers hope to a disillusioned audience, centered on a powerful pair of images depicting Jerusalem and God as mothers. A reading from the book of Isaiah, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All ye who love her, rejoice with her in joy. All you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply the delight from her glorious bosom. For this, thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity to her like a river, and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream. 
and you shall nurse and be carried on her arm and dangled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Your body shall flourish like the grass. And it shall be known that the hand of the Lord is with his servants. And his indignation is against his enemies. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 66, verses 1 through 8. Let us say it together. Be joyful in God, all of you lands. Sing the glory of his name. Sing the glory of his praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down before you, sings to you, sings out your name. Come now and see the works of God, how wonderful he is in his doing toward all people. He turned the sea into dry land, so that they went through the water on foot, and there we rejoiced in him. In his might he rules forever. His eyes keep watch over the nations. Let no rebel rise up against him. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise be heard. Who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. Reading today is from the book of Galatians, chapter 6. Paul has written that we are called to freedom, but not licentiousness. He has called on the Galatians to live by and to be guided by the Spirit. Now he tells us what this means in practice. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand? It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boost about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them, and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our hymn is number 717.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Go on your way. See, I'm sending you like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide for the labor deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But, what, but whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its street and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off and protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The 70, re 70, the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. And praise to you, Lord Christ. I bring you good news in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Holy God, your peace is a peace that's beyond understanding, and we carry it with us wherever we go. May that peace fall upon others, that they may see you in all that we do and in who we are. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So can we take the words of Jesus seriously? Yes. Yes. Okay, leave your purses and everything you brought with us, get in a pair, and let's go. Yeah. No? <laughs> we don't take it that seriously. Right? Yeah. Um, so last week in the scripture reading, uh, uh, just in the chapter before this, you saw in the Gospel of Luke a change, a switch, where Jesus had spent time in Galilee, he went through the Samaritan villages and was now entering into Gentile territory on his way to Jerusalem. And we know that whenever it says he set his face to Jerusalem, that he's on a mission now for real, right? That he is focused on what he came to do to proclaim the good news of God, the good news of love, the good news of mercy, the good news of forgiveness and grace and healing and life. The good news of salvation. So we know that last week, when when uh, this is written in the in the in the gospel, that everything that comes after that is going to still have carry that same urgency, right? And so last uh, so this week we have him say uh, the beginning of the gospel in the tenth chapter, saying the Lord appointed seventy others, right? Seventy being a word that's often used in biblical times. During the time of Jesus, it was thought of that there were just 70 sort of countries in the whole world, right? It also goes back to Moses uh, appointing 70 to go uh, with, to go to carry out the work. 
And then he sends them in pairs, and he sends them out ahead of him, right? Because the urgency is there. And, and, and even Jesus knows that he's going to use people in his mission. It was beyond the 12. It was 70, 70 others. 70 people were sent out um, in pairs of 35, and they went into uh, different villages to proclaim the good news of Jesus, to heal, right? To show them who Jesus is. And he says, go your way, I'm sending you out as laborers into the harvest, like lambs into the midst of wolves, right? Like, we know that, the world is not lavish this day, right? In these days, there's lots of wolves, uh, and at times we can behave as wolves too, right? Just chewing up whoever we can who do, we don't agree with, or whatever idea or uh, whatever it is that we have in mind. It's so easy to fall on that path. So I'm sending out like lambs in the midst of the world. But don't take anything with you because what you need is already provided for you. And what Jesus is saying is you have to count on the hospitality of those who you encounter. And, and, and he says so that when you go, you carry peace with you, right? What is that peace that's being talked about here, right? What is the peace? He says, I'm sending you out, carry no purse, Greet no one on the road because of the urgency. Whatever you went, whatever house you enter, you say first, peace be to this house. What is that peace? It's not just a random peace that we walk into someone's house and peace, say peace be with you. No, Jesus is appointing us, appointing the the 70 others, appointing the, the disciples to go forward, right? To carry him. Right? He carries, they carry Jesus' presence in the world. We carry Jesus' presence in the world. And when we carry Jesus' presence in the world, we carry peace. We carry shalom. Shalom being about God's presence. Even more than, you know, loving kindness. Even more than, you know, peace. But instead, it's that peace that passes all understanding, right? We'll hear that as a blessing. We hear it at the end of every, every uh, church service that we do. And God's peace, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and of his son, Jesus Christ. That's what we carry with us when we go into the world. That's what we carry with us is God's presence, God's peace. But how are you going to enter into a house? How are you going to enter into relationships with others in this mission of Jesus if we're not grounded in peace? Right? So what Jesus is saying is, come to me, all who are tired and are heavy laden. Right? Come to me. Keep, keep working. Right? We heard in Galatians today. Don't grow weary with doing what is right. Right? Don't give up. Whenever we have the opportunity, let's work for the good of all. Okay? We have that. But we have to be grounded in God's peace when we enter into the lives of others. And again, we don't take anything with us. And Jesus never said, and before you go into these houses, figure out whether they're going to accept you or not. Go ahead and judge the situation ahead of time. Discriminate against whatever you want. And then decide whether you're going to bring the peace or not. <laughs> right? We're so afraid to carry our faith into the world. We're, we're so afraid to be people of mission. Because we're afraid we're going to be rejected. And Jesus says, no, don't worry about that. Shake that dust of rejection or, or, or you know, disgruntledness or even hostility off of you. But carry on because the mission is here. We're on a mission and the mission is to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And the mission is to bring healing to people. And how do we do that? We bring God's presence, and God's presence heals. Even beyond curing, right? God's presence heals like no other. And so they go into these towns, and, and to some, he says, if, the, if they accept you, you 
when you go into the town, you, you, you're with them completely. You don't worry about your own dietary needs and your own rules about what you're eating. These are, the, remember all the Jewish rules about everything they ate had to be done a certain way and you had to wash your hands a certain way. You're in Gentile territory. You go into their house and you respond with, with gracious reception to the hospitality they're offering you. Right? Because mission is not a one-way street. We receive as well. Right? St. Benedict, the uh, St. Benedict, you know, they're, they're, the Benedictines are always about receiving the Jesus in each other. That's how you treat people, is because you receive the Jesus in them, and you, you, you greet the Jesus. You greet the Jesus in them, and you receive the Jesus from them, too. Right? And so you go, and you carry God's peace with you. And if they accept it, good for them. Right? And here's the thing he says. Um, don't go about looking for better places to stay. Stay where you are. Um, and he says, um, he says, and if, if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on them. Right? So our peace which we carry, which passes all understanding, rests on other people. And if we're not in that peace, other stuff is resting on other people, right? If we're in this other space of not that peace, not grounded in God, not grounded in the love of Jesus Christ, not grounded in grace and love and mercy towards all people, not grounded in unconditional love, we carry other stuff, right? And, and when we go into, we all know this, when you're in the presence of, of a lot of negativity, it's easy to be negative. We walk away from a lot of conversations in the spirit of that which we participate in. How about you bring the peace to that? How about you bring the peace to everyone and everywhere? And even if you're not getting out of your car, or not going very far, you bring peace to your neighbors by praying for them. Or to the, the person who delivers your mail. Or if you're in your car, to the person at the stop. God's peace rests on you. And when you do that, you're inviting the presence of Jesus into their lives. And the, and the whole shaking the dust off your feet is not a rejection of people. It's, it's about yourself. About I'm not going to carry all this rejection and hatefulness and negativity or, or um, hostility with me. I move on. Right? You accept it or you don't. It doesn't mean you don't still love them. You move them on. You don't carry the weight of all that forward because we have a mission to proclaim. And we can't stop. And we can't stop because of that one time we said, ask people about their faith and they sort of barked back. Never going there again, we've said. Don't tell me. Some of y'all haven't thought that in your head. Right? How do you, faith, how do you share the faith of Jesus Christ? Well, I'll tell you one thing. It's we're in that season post Christianity here, you know, as as we've we're developing in, in in time where you might be the only Bible anybody reads. You. Not this book. Not this book. You. You might be the only Bible anybody encounters. Meaning you might be the only love of God, the only the only word made flesh, the only incarnate Jesus, presence of Jesus that they ever see or hear. Keep that in mind. Right? Keep that in mind. So they come back pretty full of themselves. Right? They come back pretty full of themselves. They come back and they say, wow, that worked, Jesus. We were sent in your name to heal and offer forgiveness and proclaim the good news, and it worked. Jesus is going to say, of course it worked. <laughs> right? He says, but don't be too full of yourselves because it's not about you. It's because you brought that peace, because you brought that presence, and because you have the authority to bring it. Right? 
And, and when you bring that peace and authority, all of those powers of this world submit to that. Don't be discouraged. In Galatians, right? Keep doing what is right. It's hard to find peace, but you carry it in you, that peace which passes all understanding. And Jesus says, you know, I watched Satan fall from heaven, which, which, uh, which is, uh, 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 it's like saying, I saw that happen as you proclaimed the good news, as you ministered in my name, as you called off uh, demons in people's lives, as you did with my authority, I saw that happen. But don't be so excited about that. Be excited that you belong to me in your mind. Right? In our baptismal covenant, we say something about, do we reject all the evil forces of this world and the evil powers of this world, right? It's that. Right? And we carry God's presence. We carry Jesus with us. Those powers have no power. And we have to remember that in a world that needs the power of Jesus more than anything. So don't rejoice that you stepped on a scorpion or whatever, right? Don't, don't rejoice in that. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven, which, which is, goes back to you. You belong to me. You belong to me. Rejoice in that. Rejoice that you carry me with you. Rejoice that you belong to me even when you go out in this mission. So you might not pick up your per uh, leave your purses and walk out right now, but at some point you're going to pick up your purse and walk out into the mission field. Do you carry that peace which passes all understanding in your hearts and minds with you? Just think about that shalom, that peace, that presence of Jesus that you carry with you at all times by virtue of your baptism. And know that that has its own power, like God's power, not ours, as you go into that mission. And take Jesus seriously, right? Enter into people's spaces, Accept them as they are. Proclaim the peace of Jesus in your words and actions. Be love to them. There's a lot of people not feeling a lot of love. Be love to them. Show them this kind of love that's beyond anything we can understand. And then come back to Jesus and say, it worked. And Jesus says, well, don't be too full of yourselves. Your names are written in heaven and you belong to me. And that's good news. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Found on page five. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God, true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. 
He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. People form one are on page 383 in the Book of Common <coughs> Prayer or on page 5 in your bulletin. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Have mercy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Kevin, our bishop, for Mary Ann, our pastor, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the president, for our president Joe and John, our governor, and for the leaders of the nation, and for all who hold authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For our town of Seaford for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for our armed forces throughout the world, for police officers and firefighters, for the sick and suffering, and for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, especially those on our parish prayer list, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and those we name now either silently or aloud. And for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. In the communion of blessed Luke and of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, Lord our God. God. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, in your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace of the Lord. Peace. 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 Please be seated. Any birthdays or anniversaries? <laughs> drag them up here, Nancy. Drag them up. You know by now that this is the one day you aren't going to get away with not coming to church. <laughs> right? A couple others. Yeah, a couple others. How many years? 61. 61. In this church. In this church? On what day? July 1st. July 1st. All right. Congratulations. <laughs> Felt like yesterday, right? Yeah. <laughs> Good answer. It's been a breeze. It's been a breeze, he says. All right. We'll go with that. 
Let us pray. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants that they may continue to so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, congratulations. Happy anniversary. Blessings on many more. Thank you. All right. Um, no birthdays? Um, so uh, keep in mind that a uh, general convention will be starting in the next week or so. I think it starts on the 7th or 8th or something like that. So uh, please, your prayers. General convention, convention is in Baltimore this year. And um, it's a shorter convention than usual because of all the COVID. Um, and, uh, but uh, the church at large is gathering after having to put it off from last year. Uh, also, would like to remember uh, at, uh, in our service today at communion, uh, offer our holy sacrifice and thanksgiving for a little baby named Baylor, who is the grandson of Felicia's godmother, um, a good friend and parishioner at, uh, uh, in Williston, St. Peter's in Williston, and don't know what happened, but he was two months old. Uh, you know, passed away, and um, prayers for the Barkey family and the Odegaards, and for Trevor and Paige, uh, his parents. So uh, we'll remember him at Mass today. I told him we would. I told them we would. So life is unpredictable. And with that baby, when you saw pictures of him, these two months had so much joy all the time. Just. It's just sad, don't know, you know, don't know what happened. But um, ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, come into his courts with praise. Oh, 
Continue with the great Thanksgiving Eucharistic Prayer B, found on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer, or page 8 of our bulletin. We offer this holy sacrifice and thanksgiving for the short life of Baylor Odegaard, for the life and joy he brought and love to this world and to his family and to his resurrected life in Jesus' arms forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Amen. and above all in the word made flesh Jesus your son for in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world in him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you in him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness out of death into life on the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Luke and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia!
number 494.
worship of praise and thanksgiving and in the fellowship of being with one another. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Have a great week. Blessings. Enjoy the fireworks or whatever. And uh, see you next week, same time, same place.